Best friend tried stealing my girl behind my back, but I got the perfect revenge and a better woman in the end. I just walked into my favorite country bar and grill. Found a spot at a small table in the back and ordered a sandwich, fries, and a beer. Sat there, tuned into the TV, which happened to be on a PBS channel. They were discussing country music, reminiscing about the old stars, most of whom have passed away by now, though a few still remain. It all had a kind of melancholy vibe as they delved into the stories of these legends. I never really grasped how many of them came from poverty-stricken backgrounds, never having much. While I was chowing down on my meal, I glanced up and caught sight of my closest buddy, Bob, walking in with Olivia. It hit me hard. You see, I believed Olivia was my girlfriend. I'd invited her out for tonight, but she told me she'd already committed to hanging out with some friends tonight and suggested we go out tomorrow. Olivia and I had been seeing each other for a solid six months, and I had the impression we were an item. We practically spent every weekend together. I could feel myself falling hard for her, and she claimed she felt the same about me. We even talked about the possibility of getting engaged, but we figured we'd give it a few more months. No rush, especially since we were consistently dating. After the TV show wrapped up, someone hit the jukebox and played crazy. I was tuned into the song, and this is the second part of it. I knew you'd love me as long as you wanted and then someday you'd leave me for somebody new. This got me thinking if Bob was the new guy. The catch was, Bob was well aware of my feelings for Olivia. I guess our guy code didn't matter much to him. I kept listening to the song while they were playing the part of a couple. The last verse played. Crazy for thinking that my love could hold you I'm crazy for trying and crazy for crying and I'm crazy for loving you. I stood up from my table and walked over to Bob and Olivia. They glanced at me, and Bob started, Charlie, we. Shut your mouth. If I ever cross paths with you again, one of us will end up spending a long while in the hospital. And as for you, Olivia, I'm seriously let down. Clearly, we're done. You've revealed your true self to me. I walked out of the bar. The next day, my phone kept ringing incessantly. It was Olivia, but I wasn't in the mood to talk. Later on, the phone rang again. This time it was Bob, so I picked up. What the heck do you want? Charlie, I'm truly sorry. You know I've always found Olivia attractive, and while we were talking at work, I asked her out and she agreed. Don't lie to me. You knew she was my girl and you asked her out anyway. How many times have you been with her? Charlie, it was only. How many freaking times, Bob? If you lie to me, I'll be on your tail. Three times, Charlie. We've been together three times. We sort of developed feelings for each other. I'm sorry. What about Alice? Does she know you cheated on her? She deserves way better than you. Bob, I don't want to lay eyes on you ever again, and as for Olivia, you two can have each other. I ended the call. Alice was Bob's girlfriend, and all three of us, Bob, Alice, and I, worked at the same plant. There's a story about how we all met. The phone rang once more, and it was Olivia. I thought I might as well face it. What's up, Olivia? I want to say sorry. Bob asked me out several times and I finally agreed to go out with him once. It didn't mean anything. Cut the crap. I talked to Bob and he told me you were together at least three times. I bet it's even more than that. Was it the money? Good luck with that. You two money-hungry individuals deserve each other. I want absolutely nothing to do with you. The only person I feel sorry for is Alice. She believed you and Bob were her pals. Stay out of my life and quit calling. One grew up in Kentucky. I had eight siblings. I was the oldest and played football in high school. When I was a senior, I got a scholarship at a college in Ohio. I was 6'3 inches and weighed 260 pounds I was an offensive lineman. My parents couldn't afford to send me to college, so I jumped at the scholarship. I wanted to become a mechanical engineer because I loved working with my hands. I used to be a bit reserved, but I had a soft spot for the ladies. Growing up with sisters, I learned to treat women with respect. My mom's advice was to treat girls how I'd want my own sisters treated. I struck up a friendship with a guy named Bob. He came across as sociable, though he wasn't the sporty type. He did have some smarts about him and mentioned having some family money. He claimed he didn't have much now, but there might be an inheritance down the road. He was pursuing a business management degree. When football wasn't taking up my time, we'd hang out. Bob had a way with the ladies. We hit up numerous parties, and the women were in no short supply. I was the reserved one, yet quite a few girls showed interest in me. I've got to hand it to Bob for that. My own shyness might have kept me from striking up conversations otherwise. After graduation, I stuck around Ohio and landed a mechanical engineer job at Ford Motor Company. The pay was solid, and I found a small apartment near the plant. I also managed to snag a late model pickup truck. Every week, I'd set aside some money and send my parents 500 bucks monthly to lend a hand. My dad worked as a coal miner, and our family bond was strong. Bob landed a job at a warehouse right there in the same city as the Ford plant. It turned out he was one of our suppliers. Eventually, he worked his way up to becoming the warehouse manager. We'd hang out on weekends, and he spilled the beans about having a girlfriend at his workplace. 
Her name was Alice, and she was the inventory control honcho. He introduced me to Alice, and let me tell you, I could have easily fallen head over heels for her right then. But Bob and I had a solid bro pact, no messing with each other's girls. Tough call, but I decided to honor that code. I did date a couple of gals from my own plant, but strictly as friends. I couldn't tag along on double dates with Bob much because, well, being around Alice stirred up feelings. She was always a sweetheart to me. Bob extended an invite to me for their plant's Christmas shindig. Since they were one of our suppliers, I figured why not and agreed to go. At their bash, I crossed paths with a stunning gal named Olivia. She had some curves and a real nice figure. Olivia dressed a bit more provocatively than Alice and was quite the flirt. She shared that she worked with Bob and Alice, holding down a secretary gig for one of the higher-ups. I told her about my gig, and we spent the whole night dancing away. We decided to catch up again and even went out with Bob and Alice for New Year's Eve. Alice threw out some words about being happy for me finding someone, but the sincerity was lacking. That night, I took Olivia back to my place. She was, well, pretty darn impressive, if you catch my drift. Next morning, Olivia sounded surprised that I was living in a modest apartment. I explained that my job was relatively fresh, and I didn't need much to get by, since I was also sending money home to help out my family. I let her know that someday, sure, I'd worry about all that material stuff, but not at the moment. She brought up Bob's family being wealthy and wondered if that was true, considering he was my best bud. I confirmed it and mentioned they covered his education costs. Our dating saga rolled on, and we were hitting the town almost every weekend. My feelings were getting pretty deep, and she matched that with her own feelings. We did all sorts of stuff together, and, yeah, the bedroom action was a highlight. I'll admit, though, her flirtatious demeanor and constant chatter about material things didn't sit all that well with me. I tried to reassure her that we could carve out a good life together. Still, when we went on those double dates with Bob and Alice, things felt off kilter. There was a sort of tension between us, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Update 1, Olivia and I had been together for about half a year. We chatted about our future, maybe even getting engaged down the line. Olivia said we didn't need to rush into decisions. We hit up a county fair, and at one of those budget jewelry stands, I got Olivia a friendship ring. I let her know it meant she was mine until she felt ready to take the engagement step. She grinned when she slipped it on. By the way, I should note that I hit the gym after work about three days a week. I'd managed to drop down to 230 pounds and felt pretty decent about how I looked. Then came that moment at the country bar and grill. Gotta admit, seeing my girl and best bud locking lips really took a toll on me. After I spotted them at the restaurant and had a talk on the phone, I severed all connections with both of them. Even though I was mad as hell, I did feel pretty bad for Alice. Two weeks slipped by, and my phone rang. Charlie, I'm so sorry about you and Olivia. I figured she might have messed up, but I never thought it'd be with Bob. What's the deal, Alice? Are you saying there were others? At work, I spotted her having lunch with her boss, Brad. It seemed like a regular thing. I thought about telling you, but didn't want to hurt you in case I was off base. Then I got wind of Olivia and Bob. When I found out, I ditched him pronto. I cut ties with both of them. It's a bit tough seeing them together at work, but I stay occupied. Alice, thanks for reaching out. I was concerned about you. You're one of my closest friends. Maybe we can catch up sometime. I'd be up for that, Charlie. Good to chat with you. After our talk, I wasn't sure if I felt better or worse. A couple of weeks passed, and one evening while I was at the supermarket, I bumped into Alice. Hey, Charlie, nice to see you. How's everything going? Pretty good, and you? Back in the dating game? She gave me a smile. I've turned down quite a few date offers because I've got my sights set on someone special. I don't want to mess things up if he decides to call. Oh, I'm sorry. I was actually going to ask you if you'd like to. Yes, I'd love to go out with you. You're the one I was hoping would ask. So, when and where should we meet? I need to know how to dress. I was thinking about Saturday, hitting up my favorite country bar and grill. We exchanged goodbyes, and I confirmed that I'd pick her up at 6. When I arrived at her place, she was rocking a western look, jeans, a vest, cowgirl hat, and boots. She looked fantastic. I opened the truck door, and she hopped in. Saturdays at the place featured a country western band and singer. We snagged a booth and ordered a couple of beers. The band wasn't starting for another hour, giving us time to chat. I was surprised to discover she was originally from Kentucky, just a county over from where I grew up. She went to college there, applied for jobs, and eventually landed a gig at the supply plant in Ohio. We placed our food order. I went for a double bacon cheeseburger and fries, while she opted for a Reuben sandwich, and we shared the fries. It felt really nice to reconnect with her. She did inquire if this was the same bar where I caught Bob and Olivia. I confirmed that it was indeed the place, but I wasn't going to let a couple of cheaters ruin my favorite hangout spot. She just gave me a smile in response. Once the band started playing, we got up to dance. They kicked things off with two slow songs to encourage couples onto the dance floor. 
Their playlist always featured the classic hits, that's what the crowd wanted to hear. They switched to a faster tune, and both of us sat out. I mentioned to Alice that I wasn't much into the fast dances, but I enjoyed watching the women move. They played a couple of Roy Orbison tunes, and I always had a soft spot for his music. Following that, they performed a few songs by Loretta Lynn. Alice and I took to the floor for the slow ones. The announcer called the ladies up for some line dancing, and a few guys even joined them. Why not join the line dancing? I playfully asked Alice. You just want to check out my big A, she teased, smiling as she got up to join the other women. The line dancing started, and I couldn't help but keep my eyes on Alice. She looked right at me and gave her booty a little shake. I grinned and even clapped for her. After the song wrapped up, she came over with a smile, and I leaned in to kiss her. Pulling back, I apologized. I'm not sorry, she replied, kissing me again. We had a blast dancing and enjoying a few beers. Time flew by way too quickly. They announced that the last song was up next. I held Alice close as we swayed to the music. As the song ended, I leaned in and planted a kiss on her lips. I dropped her off at her place and asked if she'd like to go out again the next Saturday. I suggested we could visit Cedar Point, a big amusement park in Ohio. She happily agreed, and we exchanged a goodnight kiss. I didn't want to rush things on our first date. I felt fantastic at work the entire week. On Friday, I gave Alice a call to confirm our plans for Saturday. She mentioned she'd heard about the park but hadn't been there before. On Saturday morning, I picked her up, and we set off for the park. During the drive, we chatted, and I brought up the topic of whether she had mentioned to Bob or Olivia that we were dating. She told me she hadn't spoken to either of them about it. We had an amazing time riding all the roller coasters and trying out various other rides. The park also had a bunch of shows that we caught. On our way back, we decided to grab dinner at a Texas roadhouse. By the time we reached home, we were both pretty exhausted. Alice shared her place with a roommate named Joan, a friendly lady likely in her 50s who worked at a retail store. Alice appreciated having a roommate, as Joan treated her like family, and they had a close bond. I informed Alice that I'd be out of town the upcoming weekend but expressed my interest in seeing her the week after. She replied that I should give her a call once I returned. After sharing a kiss, I told her that I genuinely cared for her. She responded by saying she had always liked me as well. Upon arriving home, I wasted no time and called her, inviting her to a significant dinner event. My boss was hosting an anniversary celebration for himself and his wife, and it was going to be held at the Hilton Hotel. I explained to Alice that I had booked a hotel room for the night due to the expected drinking. I understood if she wasn't keen on attending. Her response was positive, Charlie, I'd be thrilled to go with you. We won't need two beds, you know. I want you to know, I'm falling in love with you. Just promise to be honest and not lead me on. I would never cause you any harm, and I'll make sure nobody else does either. Alice, could we use your car? I'd rather not show up at a fancy event in my truck. We can definitely take my car, and I'll let Joan know I won't be home that night. I parked my truck at her place and we opted to use her car for the event. We arrived early, intending to get ready at the hotel. During our ride, Alice mentioned that she was considering finding a new job due to her discomfort from regularly seeing Bob and Olivia. She even shared a rumor that Olivia might be pregnant. For the party, I got dressed in the bathroom, wearing a tuxedo. When I emerged into the bedroom, Alice looked stunning. She wore a form-fitting blue dress that highlighted her figure, and her hair flowed down to her shoulders. She had an elegant yet alluring presence. You look absolutely gorgeous. I might not even care about the party itself, I remarked. Her response was cheeky, oh no you don't. I didn't go through all this effort just to change again, she said it with a smile, and we headed downstairs to the party. Upon our arrival, my boss and his wife greeted us. He introduced his wife and extended a warm welcome to the party. As they moved away, I noticed him stealing glances at Alice. Knowing many of the attendees, I introduced Alice to the people I knew. She received numerous compliments. We grabbed some drinks and found a table. The event had an array of appetizers with plans for a dinner later on. Alice recognized a couple of women she was familiar with. Her role in inventory control put her in contact with these women regularly. I approached the head of human resources, Mary, and initiated a conversation. Mary, are there any job openings in inventory control or the supply chain? As a matter of fact, there is. Janice is retiring next month, and I've been tasked with finding her replacement. Do you have anyone in mind? Actually, my date you've met her Alice is searching for a new job opportunity. She currently handles inventory control. She enjoys her work but is ready for a change. Tell her to come see me on Monday, and I'll schedule an interview for her. She's quite a striking woman. Thank you, Mary. I really appreciate it. I'm sure you do, Mary chuckled. The party turned out to be a blast. I had a few dances with the wives of the employees, and Alice had her turn dancing with their husbands. Most of the time, though, we were dancing together. The dinner spread was absolutely fantastic, offering choices like roast beef, chicken, or shrimp, along with all the accompanying dishes. After a couple more drinks, we bid our goodnights to the host and headed up to our hotel room. 
Alice, are you absolutely certain about this? I don't want you to think I'm trying to take advantage of you. Charlie, stop overthinking and just be with me, she replied. Helping her out of her dress, we neatly hung it up along with my tuxedo. We pulled down the covers on the bed and, well, you know, I turned off the lights, and we snuggled in close, falling asleep together. The last words I heard before drifting off were, I love you, Charlie. I woke up to the aroma of fresh coffee. Alice had taken a shower, gotten dressed, and even brewed us each a cup of coffee. Morning, Charlie. Sleep well? It's been a while, I responded. After a quick shower and a cup of coffee, both Alice and I went down to the dining room for a pleasant breakfast. Among the fellow employees, we saw quite a few familiar faces, all with smiles on their faces. Looks like we've become a known couple, I mentioned to Alice. Mary, the HR person, stopped by our table on her way out and told Alice, see you Monday, before leaving with a smile. What was that about? Alice questioned. I forgot to tell you that you've got an interview with Mary on Monday at Ford, I said with a grin. Remember you mentioned considering a job change? Tears welled up in her eyes as she whispered, Charlie, I hope this isn't a dream. I love you so much. We chatted on our way back home. Alice, I hope I'm not rushing things, but in two weeks, I'm planning to visit my parents in Kentucky. I'd love for you to come along. I'll be leaving on Friday evening and returning on Sunday. We can also make a stop to see your parents if you'd like. I'd be happy to join you, but my parents are a bit traditional, and we might not be sharing a bed. I'm confident things will fall into place, I answered. Update 2, we set off for our trip to Kentucky. Alice mentioned the latest rumor about Bob and Olivia planning to get married next month due to Olivia's visible pregnancy. I believe Olivia thinks she's marrying into wealth, but she'll soon realize it's not Bob who's well off, but his parents. Bob may live lavishly, but it's mostly based on debt, I shared with her. Upon arriving at my parents' home, we were greeted by a spacious old farmhouse with numerous bedrooms and bathrooms. My siblings who still resided there came out to welcome us, followed by mom and dad. I embraced everyone and introduced Alice, who received warm hugs from them all. We spent a couple of hours chatting. I knew my family would adore Alice. She was looking at the photos on the wall, particularly one of me in my football uniform from my younger days. I noticed tears in her eyes. Alice, what's wrong? Are you alright? Do you recall that time when you were playing football at Grayling during an away game? After the match, you walked through the tunnel and there were two guys attempting to drag a girl in a yellow sweater into the tunnel. You confronted one of the guys, threw him down, and then tackled the other. You warned them that if they ever bother the girl again, you'd return to finish what you started. Then you walked away into the locker room. Yeah, I remember that incident, but I've never shared it with anyone. How did you come to know about it? Charlie, I was that girl. I never saw your face, just the number 67 on your jersey. I tried to find you afterward, but no one knew who you were. I did manage to find out your name was Charles, but that was all I could discover. I had been waiting by the tunnel for my friend when those two guys grabbed me, dragged me into the tunnel, and said they wanted to have some fun. I shouted at them to let me go. That's when you appeared. They never bothered me again. She leaned in and kissed me. There was something about you that felt familiar the first time I met you, when Bob introduced us. That's the only positive thing I can say about Bob. He introduced us. My mom had prepared a bed for Alice, and she informed me that I could sleep in the basement where there was an extra bed. Around 1 in the morning, Alice joined me. We shared a quiet intimate moment, though it was a bit challenging due to the circumstances, and she returned to her bed about an hour later. On Saturday, we visited Alice's family. She hadn't mentioned that her parents were well off. They had a lovely house, and Alice had two younger and attractive sisters. They were a few years younger than Alice. She introduced me as her boyfriend. I overheard Sandy, one of her sisters, saying to Alice that I looked quite handsome. We went inside and chatted for a while. Hank, her father, inquired about my job and background. He had his concerns about his little girl, as he affectionately referred to her. Mr. Carter, I'd like to talk to you about marrying your daughter. I'm here to ask for your blessing. Alice and I hadn't discussed this beforehand, so she seemed surprised and teary-eyed as she looked at me. Even though we haven't been together for a long time, our love is strong, and we believe we can build a great life together in marriage. Charlie, I appreciate that you came to talk to me, though you didn't have to. You should know by now that Alice follows her heart. Alice, do you love Charlie? Yes, Daddy, I truly do, with all my heart. Then you have my blessing, on one condition, you two must get married here in Kentucky so your mom and I can give you a proper wedding. Oh and we'll cover the expenses. I surprised everyone when I took out an engagement ring from my pocket, knelt down on one knee, and proposed to Alice. She said yes, kissed me, and then rushed over to kiss her dad and embrace her mom, who was shedding tears of joy. We all stood up and enjoyed a fantastic chicken dinner together. We went back to my parents' house and mentioned to the Carters that we'd keep them updated about our future plans. When we shared the news of our engagement with mom and dad, they were absolutely thrilled. Many of my relatives who still live nearby were coming over for a barbecue. 
Dad proudly claimed the role of grill master, while Mom prepared the meat and other dishes inside. Alice offered to help in the kitchen, she mentioned she enjoyed cooking too. All my relatives came by to greet me and get acquainted with Alice. She was the first woman I'd brought home to meet the family, and they all assured me that she was a keeper and encouraged me to make her happy. After a day of lively celebration, we bid farewell to our relatives and promised to inform them of our wedding date. Just before we headed to bed, Alice whispered to me that my mom had warned her about an obstacle on the stairs. It turned out she accidentally kicked a pair of shoes and they tumbled down the stairs. Alice tried to apologize, but mom reassured her, saying she had been young once and that Alice's lively spirit was probably why she ended up with so many children. Alice did come back downstairs again, and we shared a quiet and intimate moment together. We tried to keep things hushed, but you know how that goes. She didn't head back upstairs until nearly 5 in the morning. After a night of intimacy, we drifted off to sleep. In the morning, mom and Alice exchanged knowing smiles. We all had a hearty country breakfast, then said our goodbyes with hugs and kisses before making our way home. On Monday, Alice had her appointment with the HR department. By Tuesday, she received a call from Mary, who informed her that she got the job and could submit her two-week notice. She called me to share the news, but I was already in the loop. We decided to celebrate by going out for dinner that evening at my favorite country bar. At the restaurant, we both ordered steak dinners. Alice mentioned that Bob and Olivia were on vacation that week and the next. They were off to Las Vegas to tie the knot. She remarked that it was the most enjoyable two weeks she'd experienced at the plant since she didn't have to deal with Bob and Olivia. She added that everyone was sad to see her leave, but they understood she was moving on to a better opportunity. Working at Ford meant having some of the highest paying jobs in the region. Alice felt fortunate to have secured the interview and the job offer, she had earned it. She kept our dating and engagement a secret from everyone else. She revealed that she left an anonymous note on Bob's desk before departing. The note advised him to consider a DNA test once the baby was born, given his wife's frequent lunches with her boss. The note concluded with congratulations, but she deliberately left it unsigned. From the time she started at our workplace, she always wore a radiant smile. Whenever guys approached her for dates, she proudly displayed her engagement ring and made it clear that she was engaged to me. They wisely knew not to cross any boundaries. Alice shared that Joan was assisting her in planning the wedding. Joan played the role of a caring guardian. Joan had a married daughter of her own, and she and Alice became close friends, sharing expenses as roommates. I made it a point to drop by a couple of times each week to lend a hand wherever needed. I reached out to my mom and asked if she could provide a list of relatives and friends to invite from our side of the family. My mom took it a step further and bought invitations, taking care of the invites for us. I provided her with the wedding date, which was set for four months down the line. Alice spoke to her mom and shared the wedding date with her as well. Her parents were taking on the responsibility of finding a suitable church and a spacious venue for the reception. Her mom volunteered to handle sending out invitations to their side of the family. Given her dad's business background, he had numerous connections and clients. While I was quite anxious about everything, I was actually contributing the least. I approached several colleagues at work to see if they'd be interested in attending the wedding. I informed them that we were planning to get married in Kentucky. Surprisingly, many expressed their intention to attend. Thanks to Joan's connections at the retail store, she arranged for a dressmaker for Alice's wedding gown. Joan also confirmed that she and her daughter would be present at the event. Sophie, Alice's mother, called and informed us that she had secured a caterer. However, she mentioned that she would need a head count closer to the wedding date. Sophie also mentioned that her husband, Hank, had lined up a talented band. It seemed like all the pieces were falling into place. I asked Alice if she thought we were going overboard with the preparations. It was clear that this wedding was going to come with a hefty price tag. Charlie, this grand wedding idea is entirely my parents' vision. They've dreamed of this kind of wedding since we were little girls. Trust me, my sisters will be having similarly lavish weddings. Why didn't you ever tell me you came from a wealthy background? I kept my family's financial background hidden because I wanted you to be interested in me for who I am. Just so you know, I only share this with Joan and not even Bob knows. Does this revelation change anything for you? No, I'm interested in you as a person, not anything else. If you'd like, I'm willing to sign a prenuptial agreement. Charlie, there won't be any need for a prenup. I believe we'll be together forever. Besides, I don't possess much wealth at the moment. Perhaps in the future through inheritance, but not much now. I'll have a loving husband to support me. Alice sorted out her wedding party lineup. Her father would walk her down the aisle. Her older sister would serve as the maid of honor, while her younger sister would be one of the bridesmaids. She invited my two married sisters to be bridesmaids as well. My brothers-in-law would be my groomsmen, and my single brothers would be paired with her sisters. It turned out that my younger brother would be my best man. My niece and nephew were chosen as the flower girl and ring bearer, respectively. We reached out to them all, and they gladly accepted. Thankfully, it truly became a family affair. Alice was thriving in her new job, and everyone admired her. She was well loved by her colleagues. What's not to like? A dilemma arose. 
since she had only worked there for four months, she hadn't accrued any vacation days. We brainstormed and considered the option of heading down on Friday night, getting married on Saturday, and returning on Sunday. It would be a whirlwind, but with limited choices, it seemed doable. Just two weeks before the wedding, the plant manager summoned me to his office. We had a good rapport, and he even mentioned that he was planning to attend the wedding. Hey Charlie, I heard you're dealing with an issue around the time of your wedding. Mary mentioned that you're leaving on Friday, tying the knot on Saturday, and returning on Sunday. Is that right? Yeah, Mark, that's the plan. Alice doesn't have any vacation days left. Well, Charlie, make sure you let your lovely wife know that we're granting her personal time from Thursday all the way through the next week. Also, I've got two tickets for a four-day cruise as a honeymoon gift. Thanks, Mark, I'm sure she'll be thrilled. I shook his hand and got in touch with Alice in her office to inform her that we're going out for lunch. I told her I had something important to discuss. While at the restaurant, Alice inquired, What's up, Charlie? What's this thing you want to talk about? Mark called me into his office and informed me that they're giving you time off from Thursday to the entire following week. We don't have to rush to get there or hurry back. And wait, there's more. He gave us two tickets for a four-day cruise as a wedding gift. I placed the tickets on the table. Naturally, my Alice started tearing up. We had everything ready for the wedding, and we could head down on Thursday, which made things simpler for us. Rehearsal and the rehearsal dinner took place on Friday. I checked with my dad if he needed money, and he shared that he had kept aside the money I sent him since we announced the wedding. I really admired and respected that man. After the dinner, I gave Alice a kiss and let her know I'd be seeing her the next day. Alice had informed her mom about the number of people attending both the wedding and the reception. She didn't tell me the count, mentioning that I was already nervous enough. I knew all my siblings, aunts, uncles, and their families would be present. I heard that the motels in both counties had been fully booked for months. I hoped that our guests were able to find accommodations. On Saturday morning, I woke up, and my mom insisted I have breakfast. I couldn't go through the whole day on an empty, anxious stomach. During our breakfast conversation, mom mentioned that they had met the Carters and found them to be really friendly people who thought highly of me. After breakfast, I took a long shower and shaved. I got dressed in my tuxedo, a white one to match Alice's dress. My brothers were also there, wearing black tuxedos. All four of them were part of the wedding party. It was time to head to the church. The church was located in the neighboring county, but it was only 20 miles away. The church was quite large, and my brother mentioned that it could accommodate more than 600 people. As the guests began to arrive, my brothers and I helped them find their seats as they walked in. They said I didn't have to assist, but I insisted on doing something. Joan and her daughter showed up, and I directed them to sit with the families on Alice's side. I was seating relatives whom I hadn't seen in years. I was happy to spot some of my co-workers at the event. My boss, Mark, and his wife had flown in for the occasion. I was then instructed to go to the front of the church because Alice's limousine had arrived, and I wasn't supposed to see her before the ceremony. I went up to chat with my parents briefly. A woman began playing some music on the organ. After a couple of songs, an announcement was made for the guests to take their seats as the wedding was about to start. Every wedding has its unique touches, and I walked to the front and stood beside the minister. The first one to walk down the aisle was Sandy, accompanied by my brother. They made a great-looking pair. They both went up to the front and took their positions. Following them was Marie, who came down with my other single brother. After that, my married brothers walked down with their wives. One of my nephews then came down as the ring bearer, while I held the actual wedding ring in my pocket. Two men rolled out a white cloth, and my niece strolled down the aisle, scattering rose petals. The music shifted, and everyone stood up. The wedding march began, and Alice was making her way down the aisle, escorted by her very proud father. She looked incredibly beautiful, like an angel. I could feel tears streaming down my face. Who presents this woman to this man? Her mother and I, her father replied. We exchanged our vows, I placed the ring on her finger, and then I was given the go-ahead to kiss the bride, which I did. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Charles Jones. Everyone rose to their feet and cheered. We stood at the church door alongside the other members of the wedding party, expressing our gratitude to everyone who had attended. It took more than 30 minutes for the church to clear out. As people left, they all headed over to the rented hall. When we arrived at the hall, there were drinks and appetizers available for everyone. A band was playing, though not many were dancing at that moment. Tables had been arranged all around. Upon our entrance, the entire crowd stood up and cheered for us. We took our seats, Mr. Carter said a few words, and then announced that the food was ready. The serving tables were set up on both sides, making sure everyone got their food quite swiftly. Although Alice and I were served first, we probably finished eating last, as we kept pausing to kiss every 10 seconds in response to the glass clinking. Some of the tables were moved back from the dance floor to make more space for dancing. Alice and I were the initial pair to hit the dance floor, followed by the rest of the wedding party, and then everyone joined in. The reception carried on for a solid four hours. Some guests even helped themselves to another round of food. 
It truly was a fantastic night. Epilogue, we had an amazing time during our cruise. It was a good decision to bring my truck to the wedding. I rented a small U-Haul and loaded it up with all the gifts we were given. When we returned home, we started looking for a new house. Eventually, we found a nice three-bedroom home with a hot tub. We spent a couple of weeks at my small apartment initially, but Alice felt we needed something a bit more spacious. We decided to leave the gifts we brought back at Joan's house since we wouldn't be living there. We checked if she could manage on her own, and she assured us she didn't have any financial troubles she simply enjoyed taking care of Alice, but now that responsibility was shared with me. Every evening, we'd work on writing thank you cards. I believe we're just about finished with that now. We also have lunch together at work around three times a week. It's been three months since the wedding, and things are going really well. We haven't had any arguments, and we always discuss and resolve any differences we have. We've always been told that communication is key, which is something we actively practice. Alice mentioned that one of her friends from another workplace called her, and Olivia discovered that Bob is in financial trouble with a lot of debt. There was also a rumor that someone advised Bob to consider a DNA test when Olivia has the baby. However, they're uncertain about the source of that information. A few weeks passed, and then Alice received another phone call informing her about some issues going on with Bob and Olivia. It turns out Bob took a DNA test, and it confirmed that he wasn't the father. Isn't that just wild? Thanks for reading my story. The part about the country music is true, I actually saw it on PBS. The end.